Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Anuj, an MBBS graduate from GMC Nagpur. I scored an All India rank of 1307 in NEET PG24 while doing my internship. So in this video, I'll be basically going over how do you ace your NEET PG or NICT when you are an intern. This not just applies to interns, but also post interns who are working as medical officers in different parts of the India. Even if you're an MBBS student, if you're preparing for your NEET PG along with your MBBS years, this video is still relevant to you because you're going to be an intern one day. I completed my internship in April and I gave my NEET PG exam in August. I've documented all of it on my Instagram, so you can go follow me there to check out my internship stories. It was one of the most fun times I had as a medical student but also one of the most hectic times of my life. So if you are ready to take this journey with me to cracking your NEET PG entrance examination while working a job or while being an intern, make sure you subscribe to the channel and without any further ado, let's go. The first thing that you should be doing in your day is to find out a calendar and write down what postings are going to take place from which dates to what dates. Now you might have already done this but you have to have a visual representation of this. That means get a calendar, that means a physical calendar and on that you write down okay from this date to this date I am going to be busy in let's say medicine posting or trauma posting or orthopedics posting. This is going to give you an idea of what your weeks or your months are going to look like going in the future. If you don't have any idea of where your future is going, it's very difficult to plan it. So just get a calendar. I suggest you buy a notice board like this and paste four months at a time so that you can plan in a short term manner. I always used to have four months and the four clinical postings marked in the calendars like this. This way I was able to plan more efficiently. There are two types of postings going forward in your internship. One is the light posting, other is the heavy posting. The light postings, the examples are PSM, psychiatry, anesthesia, blood bank, plastic surgery, all of these are light postings. And then you have got your heavy postings like medicine, surgery, orthopedics, gynecology, uh, pediatrics, all of these are heavy postings. The main difference is that in the heavy postings, you have to do a lot of additional duties. There, there are emergency days, there are admission days, there are post-emergency days. Then you've also got your pre-emergency day and night duties, most importantly. In the light postings, all of this are missing. Nobody is going to ask you to do a night duty in your PSM, except if you're in a rural hospital, which is compulsory for everyone to do. So depending on your individual schedule, you might be entering a posting which is heavy or you might be entering a posting which is light. So take a look at your internship timetable and find out that what is your next four months going to look like? It is, is it going to be light posting or will it be heavy posting or will it be a mixture of both? And I'll tell you exactly how do we proceed from here. Step two is understanding what do we actually want from internship. In our light postings, the main goal is to study for NEET PG and in our heavy postings, the main goal, my friends, is to become a good doctor. Internship, mein, we are expected to understand the treatment algorithm of the patient, the diagnosis algorithm of the patient and the investigation and follow up of the patient. So let's say a patient comes to you who is having cough, who is having fever, also having sort of anemia, you are just seeing that patient for the first time. How do you investigate this patient further to find out what is the cause of all of this? Let's say that you send a CBC and you get a report of let's say the WBC count in lakhs. You are obviously going to suspect of leukemia. And let's say that you get a diagnosis at acute myeloid leukemia. After admitting the patient into your ward, how do you work up this patient? What are all the things that you do in your treatment algorithm? And not just that, how do you follow up the patient when the patient is discharged from your hospital? This is the main goal that you have to learn in your internship, not just with respect to AMS but to all diseases in general. As an MBBS student, at least you have given your theory exams well, you have passed, that's why you're in internship. So you are expected to know a bit of theory, but nobody expects you to be a master of theory. They all just want you to work as much as you can. And that's exactly what you have to do as well, because in the end, you have to become a doctor. So in your heavy postings, whenever you're seeing a patient, always have a good clinical eye and try to examine the patient and try to get to your diagnosis, try to manage the OPDs individually. And if possible, if you get a chance, do get in for cuttings. Basically say yes to opportunities during the heavy postings, because that is how you become a doctor and never shy away from these things. Of course, with internship, you also have the faltu work that is going to trace reports or sampling or intracath or random things which are not actually supposed to be done by a doctor. They are supposed to be a nursing job. But in any case, most of the colleges, the interns are the ones which are doing all of that. But we can do absolutely nothing about it. So our main goal should be to maximize our output by seeing the patients with a good clinical eye and understanding the treatment, management, follow-up and investigations of the patient. Now you might be thinking, yeah, I clicked on this video asking how do we actually crack neat PG and this guy is telling me to do the postings. How am I going to crack neat PG if I do the postings, the simple idea is that the clinical cases which you're going to be encountering on a day-to-day -day basis, they're going to give you an idea about how do you approach the patients and how do you approach the diagnosis. In neat PG, almost all the questions are clinical cases and when you look at the clinical cases, you have to think like a doctor. For that, you have to train like a doctor. You don't have to train like a medical student. And trust me, when you actually work in internship, trust me, when you actually have a good clinical eye, your neat PG questions becomes very, very easier for you because you know what to do next. I'll give you a basic example. A person comes to me with some issues of thyroid gland. Say that the person is having some sort of tremors, palpitations, she's having hypertension. What do I do? I have options as I'll do FNSE of thyroid, I'll do the biopsy of thyroid, I'll probably do a sonography of thyroid or I'll do a thyroid function test. So basically the answer is the first step of investigation is to do the thyroid function test. And you don't read that in your textbooks, you only get it once you start practicing. 
once you start seeing patients like this and you start approaching patients like this after you've got your thyroid reports then you see hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism and then investigate it further in short the heavy postings will let you build the clinical concepts which are actually going to be helpful in your neat pg examination you know there are certain easy questions also which neat pg asks what is the canola number 18 color look like it's green what is the foley's of 18 number look like it's red i never mugged up all of this because i use this on a day-to-day -day basis and that that's how you turn your internship heavy postings also into a learn, learning gold mine the next thing you have to remember in heavy postings my dear friends is to give a lot of grant tests because grant tests three hours you can just sit down anytime you'll get three hours free in one week it's easy even in heavy postings you get that just sit down and give it the reason is you have to stay in touch with your need pg preparation as well i'm not asking you to open your book and study after you've done an 18 hour shift i'm not asking you to do study after you've done a night shift it's okay you can skip the studying part but please be in touch with your grant test the reason is let's say after four months of internship you are trying to start fresh and the first thing that you do is do your grant test and then you get a very bad score like 85 90 questions correct your moral is immediately crushed and you are already deciding i want to take a drop year for your for my neat pg exam that's where most of the students lose and that's what you don't have to do if you're going to be staying in touch with your grant test during your neat pg preparation even your heavy postings then it you won't get detached to the preparation and in the end you will prevail so no matter how heavy your posting is going on if you are not able to study just give a weekly grant test every sunday maybe just sit down and give a grant test trust me staying in touch with your preparation is very very important and giving your grant test in the initial hour of preparation is never about testing how many questions you know it's always about learning how do you give the grant test i would highly highly recommend all of you guys who are interns to get marrow's plan for the grant test because as a person who has given neat pg i'll tell you that marrow's grant test and the real neat pg exams are absolutely 100 percent similar the same level of questions that you get in marrow question bank or grant test the same you should be expecting from neat pg this year what we saw was that in 2024 the neat pg questions were so difficult they were literally so difficult that I, I on the exam center felt like I was giving a marrow sheet. I think that was an advantage for me because I had already given like 28 marrow grant tests before. I think grant tests are included in the plan A of marrow and I think in internship you can totally afford that. Alright, so from the heavy posting, we have learned two things so far. First of all, do your postings well and go, do it with a good clinical eye. Secondly, solve a lot of grant tests to stay in touch with your preparation and not have a shock four months later. I'll tell you my story. When I was posted in internship, starting mehi, I got I got back to my four to five months of heavy postings right from pediatrics, trauma, ICUs, medicine, surgery, orthopedics, all of this in the start itself. So my preparation was kind of crushed. I was nowhere. The only thing I was doing was grant tests. There's this one myth I'd like to address is that people solve the question banks in the posting themselves. I am the people that I am talking about. I used to do that in the internship. To be honest, they did not help me at all. So if you are thinking of solving custom modules or question banks while in the internship, I would highly advise against that. The reason is in the end, they did not benefit me at all. What benefited me was sitting at my table during the light postings time and just studying very well, noting down the difficult questions in my mistake book and making my own fantastic four notes. So I hope I've cleared that. Next, we move on to the light postings. What do you expect in the light postings? and how do you go forward with it first of all light postings are a gold mine you don't have to work that much even when you are in your work area you can absolutely nail the postings most of the light postings are going to be seven to eight hours long max to max 10 hours 12 hours long but after that you are going to go home and you are going to have plenty of time to study so you have to capitalize on this time and just recover all the time that you've lost during heavy postings you have to work twice or thrice as hard you have to sacrifice your sleep but you have to get your work done in light postings there is no alternative to sacrifice literally you have to work twice as hard if you really want to crack this examination in your first attempt and trust me once you crack it in your first attempt life becomes so much simpler so much easier and you will start to have so much fun after the exam so that should be your goal in your light postings you can learn a bit from the light postings as well but most of it is theoretical in the light posting stage you have to give as many gts as possible three to four days you can start giving a gt and even in one week at least you should give one gt and you should review it thoroughly you should start to make your own notes in the light posting as possible and whatever light posting you get even if you get one week in the between of your heavy posting in that one you have to maximize your study i'm telling you guys if you don't work in your light postings you are never going to crack neat pg that is the simple simple goal of it heavy postings may you cannot study and in light posting if you don't study by yourself nobody can save you that was all i wanted to talk about with respect to postings now let me take you to the next point that is create a study plan for you so i can give you a study plan but it might not apply to you so i leave it up to you what to study and when to study the general rule of thumb to follow is that if it's a long subject for example final year subjects then you don't have to give it more than four to five days five days is a lot to give to one subject but if it's a short subject for example sarpo then you have to give it like one or two days if it's an intermediate subject three to four days that's maximum so what do you do how do you plan it you go to your whiteboard or go to your notebook and write down the dates of the next 25 days in the next 25 days you will write down exactly what day what subject are you going to study 
so for the first four days let's say i want to study surgery next three days i'll be studying gynecology next three days it's pediatrics next two days it's anatomy for me because i'm good at anatomy after that next five days it's going to be sarpo because all five subjects can be covered in five days with btr this you have to make and you have to keep it permanently on your whiteboard you will not be using your whiteboard you will not be erasing that and every morning once you wake up you go to your posting you come back you see that timetable and you see what you have to do today and you sit down and you do it that's the simple aspect of it if you don't have a study plan you will be here and there throwing around yourself doing one day one thing another day another thing that's no way to study you have to be organized you have to make you have to be meticulous and that's how you do it you create a personalized study plan on your whiteboard and do things from there secondly during the time of your studies what are you going to be using what is going to be your source it's going to be rapid revision videos if possible from marrow marrow's rapid revision is unbeatable there is no other source like it trust me i have used all of the 19 subjects rr and there is literally no source like it so trust 100% with marrow and it will it will definitely help you out quite a lot there is rapid revision videos present in the application if you don't see it uh, switch to edition 6.5 you will definitely see it if possible watch the videos and and if not then directly go towards the notes and read those notes as many times as possible now you might say that he's suggesting marrow blah blah you can go watch my neat pg vlogs which are shot during the situation of neat pg when i was studying in that also i have told you i'm studying from this source that source all the things that i'm saying are back up by experience and i only want to see you succeed so follow the marrow rapid revision top to bottom do it and you'll see your scores increase quite a lot start with the long subjects because those will fetch you the highest marks then go over to the short subjects which don't have that much weightage i always suggest starting off with obg and surgery because it's one of the most easily doable things it's not that complicated to understand it will fetch you a lot of marks definitely if you want you can add btr to it because it's a good resource but only after you have done your marrow in your first reading your target should be to complete your notes and in so subsequent readings just refine those notes and make them stronger and stronger all right moving on to the next step learn time management well and how do you do it if you are having postings for 6 days but you are getting sunday off that is how that is where you make the most of it you sit the entirety of saturday evening if possible the night and also the sunday and study as much as possible i'm again iterating to you no matter how many of these videos you watch you will not qualify the exams if you don't study that's the crux of it. you're just watching this video to refine your preparation but in the end it's as simple as sitting down on your desk and moving your extraocular muscles that's it one way to make time Time during the postings is try waking up earlier so that's what i did during my postings as well i used to wake up at 4 4 30 and 5 depending on what day it was and before going to the clinical postings i used to study for three to four hours so let's say i wake up at four so i study for four hours till eight and then at eight or eight thirty i go on to my clinical posting from 8 39 i work till 2 30 or 4 2 30 or 3 and when i leave i come back come back maybe rest for a bit and start studying from 6 once again till till the night at 10 so in the morning i've got four hour session done in the evening i've got four hour session done that's eight hours of high yield study and that's all you need to crack neat pg like eight to ten hours of good study if you do every day for four months you will be cracking neat pg 100 percent no questions asked if you can't wake up early then stop giving me this excuse that you can't wake up early just if you really want to crack it you will have to sacrifice your sleep when when your residency start sleep is going to be a luxury anyway so it so might as well you get habituated to it right now all right the next point is making very good excellent notes now i've got a very beautiful method called as the fantastic four note taking method which which i'll be making a separate video for but in short you have to concise your notes as much as possible because you have to revise them a lot of times frequent notes revision plus solving the grand test and solving the question bank is the key to cracking neat pg your first revision will take you at least three months the second read should take you not more than one and a half months the third revision will take you not more than one month and that will only happen if you size your notes write only the topics which you feel are important or are pyqs or you feel you are weak at them otherwise don't write all the topics there is no point in learning everything you have to read selectively and you have to read it well when you start giving grand tests whatever mistakes you are doing write down those mistakes in your mistake book and revise them frequently similar thing which you, similar thing you can do with your previous year questions and write them down in the same notebook the last point is with respect to the mindset a lot of the times you will feel burnout because of your duties plus your studying plus you are not getting time to enjoy your life you will definitely feel burnout please have a partner that you can study with it might be your friend it might be your boyfriend it might be your girlfriend but just find somebody that you can stay in touch with during your preparation time and you can keep them account and they can keep you accountable. This is single-handedly the most important thing that you can do to your preparation. I always had my friend with me and we used to study together, plan things together, explain each other difficult topics, tell each other different videos which we found on YouTube which were useful and basically help each other when we were down and you have to find someone like that. If you don't, just comment down in these videos and guys, if you see the comments, reply to them and get in touch, exchange your email IDs and find somebody to study with. It's really, really important. If possible, you can join the gym. That will give you a lot of strength as well as some mental willpower to battle all the difficult things upcoming in your future serve as a good place to exercise and let all the stress be relieved.
always and always trust your source please don't fall into fomo whatever source you are taking let it be marrow dams batia preplider kuch bhi ho yaar just trust your source 100% if you start falling with your source then the problem starts to happen then you fall into the trap of fomo again i'm saying if you are still confused about what to study where to study from just go with the marrow rapid revision it should cover 99% of the questions that the neat pg examination will ask and you can also solve the grant as along it if you found that this video was helpful then i'm pretty sure you'll find my neat pg success blueprint a gold mine it has 25 videos such as this one and we go over each single aspect of neat pg preparation right from how do you solve the grant test how do you manage your time how do you review the grant test how do you manage your bookmarks to how do you schedule your revisions how do you make your own fantastic four note books and an individual subject wise guide where i tell you the hot spots of each subject for example in biochemistry you should never miss out the vitamins never miss out the glycosaminoglycans the mucopolysaccharidosis such that all the important topics from all the 19 subjects right from anatomy all the way to sarpo subjects every single important topic of neat pg is covered you can make a list out of it and make sure that you study these topics before you go to the exam it has got lifetime access and we also have and i've also shared a lot of my notes in my blueprint plus you'll get access to a chat which is only available to 2500 plus blueprint subscribers where we all talk about stuff that is difficult to us so i've added a link in the description you can go check out blueprint for yourself use the code pluripotent to get 15 percent off and since it has lifetime access you can buy it now you can use it as many times as you like i hope that you take this opportunity up and and ace your NEET PG preparation by following the NEET PG success blueprint. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe if you like more videos such as this one. Alright, I'll see you in the blueprint. Bye.